Are you on the RCR mailing list? Never miss a beat of the news and hard-hitting stories you've come to know and love. Stay in the loop. Visit realitycheck.radio forward slash email. Now it's time for Cam's Buddies. This week, we'll find out what they think about the astounding revelations regarding our education system and the huge numbers of kids failing mathematics. My producer has them all lined up and ready to go. Let's go now to Cam's Buddies. Welcome to Cam's Buddies, Miles. Good to have you back. Hi, Cam. How are you today? Oh, box of birds. Excellent. Top for today, uh, you may have seen on the weekend the National Party uh, at their conference announced a new policy to do with education, mainly focusing around mathematics. They talked about where 22% of students at year eight were at the expected standard, meaning 78% weren't. Three out of five students at year eight were more than a year behind. 8% of kids at our lowest decile schools are at curriculum in maths at year eight, and 79% are more than a year behind. And for Maori, just 12% are at the curriculum in year eight, and 76% are more than a year behind. So the government said they're going to do something, and the Labour Party's upset because they don't agree with the 22%. They think it's 42% that are at the expected standard, which is, of course, 58% still failing. What are your thoughts on all of that? Well, it's a big red button on my um, back education. I think um, it's an, an appalling mess at the at the moment, and that's largely thanks to the Labour Party and their policies or lack of policies. I think the national plan looks good, but educational um, needs need to be met on many fronts. And before any of that can happen, kids have to be in class. And I don't know whether you can remember, Cam, the amount of truancy and absenteeism, those levels were reported earlier in the year, and they were staggering, if you remember. Well, yeah, I mean, you can't you can't be at the required standard for mathematics or indeed any other subject if you don't go to school, right? Unless you're super bright and you can That's teach exactly yourself. right. There's bugger all people that are in the same league as me, is there? Or you, in fact. Um, you know, well, the, the, the problem that I see is, If they don't fix the truancy and absenteeism, and that was largely ignored by the Labour government, if they don't fix that or try and do something with that alongside the curriculum announcements, then it doesn't matter what curriculum announcements you actually enact or or get um, done because the students aren't in classrooms, and if they're not in classrooms, they're not listening, they're not learning, they're not doing mathematics. So that would be my first big thing is let's make sure that the educational initiatives announced are rounded and kids actually get into the um, classrooms. I mean, it's a huge issue in truancy, but I mean, this, these are appalling statistics. Even if you take the generous uh, read of the statistics by the Labour Party where they say just 42% are at uh, at the required standard, meaning 58% are failing. That's an indictment on our union-protected education system that the Labour Party continues to protect the unions at. I mean, clearly, if you look at those statistics, the union system of education is failing. And yet when the union do something about it with charter schools or something, guess what? We get... Labour Party, the unions, and every other man and his dog who thinks they know how to teach children saying, oh, no, it can't be done. Well, what they're doing isn't working, so why don't they just shut up? The unions have had um, the teaching profession by the throat for many years. And sad to say, the levels of um, achievement have been rising. Not at all. They haven't. And if they are not um, rising... What's happening? Oh, I, I'll tell you what, everything is protected by the union, so we can't make any initiatives, we can't make any changes. It seems to me that the union is actually intimately involved in the decline of the educational standards, and 
when I said a well-rounded um, approach, starting with truancy, I also think we need to actually look at what the unions and the union protected um, curriculum is doing. For a start, I think there's only a, a precious few hours in the day that teachers are in front of students. And I want them to be doing mathematics. I want them to be doing English. I want them to be learning science. You know what I don't want them to be learning? I don't want them to be learning te reo, which is going to be useless in the real world. I actually think that if there is um, a place for te reo, it needs to be an option. And plenty of people will take that option. But I think science, I think mathematics, I think English, these are the skills we really need to focus on to bring them up to speed. Because without that, our education system is going to fail more than a generation of school children. I think it's already failing more than a generation of school children. If they've got to year eight and they're behind, then there's a good chance that every year subsequent, you know, behind them, uh, in year seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, are also behind. And then let's look at the year nine students, 10 and 11, and have a look at them and see where are they placed? Because, you know, this hasn't just magically appeared out of nowhere. You don't go from, from you know, good past you know, levels of, of uh, competency in mathematics to just 22% having competency in mathematics, uh, you know, in a New York minute. It doesn't happen instantly. It happens. Exactly right. How long has this been sliding for, and why hasn't anybody done anything about it? Well, I think the answer lies in the uh, the control um, that the union has of the teaching market and any innovations. Uh, look, let's be quite clear. Anything that the National Party suggests, good or bad, in fact, anything at all that they suggest in education, will be opposed by the unions. And that is nothing more than an ideological position. The unions are really demonstrating that they're uh, past their use-by date, in my humble opinion. Not fit for purpose. That's what in would... my humble opinion, that would be exactly right. So, th therefore, we need to actually get a, a broom and sweep the floor clean and start again. And I have to take my hat off to Seymour and Act. Charter schools proved their worth, and, I mean, hell's bells. Let's actually get back to a system where the school is doing the basics right, and if the unions can't accept that, then the unions need to go. Well, it can't be soon enough for me. Um, you know, I, you can't put the blame on anyone else other than the, the system, the education system, and all of the teachers that are in it. And I'm not um, attacking individual teachers, but I am attacking this predilection for Labour and the teacher unions to always say we've got a world-class education system. Well, the evidence is before us, and, you know, it's mathematics, so you, there's no grey areas. You're either right or you're wrong. And at 22% at a meeting standard, I'd say we don't have a world-class education system and if they can show me evidence otherwise, I'm all ears. But right now I'm looking at abject failure uh, for a generation at least, possibly more. Decades of ideology. That's what I chalk it up to. And I think that needs to be broken. That pot needs to be dashed. And we need to look at an all-round system. And I think the charter school model has shown us that when ideology is gone, kids flourish. And I think you're absolutely right on that, Miles. Well, I've got Lindley lined up following you, so I better go to her. Thanks for your call, and we'll talk again next week. Goodbye, Cam. Have a good one. Welcome to Cam's Buddies, Lindley. Good to have you back. Hi, Cam. Yeah, it's good to be here, isn't it? Lovely and fine down here, except for the frosts. Oh well, you know we've got a. It's called winter. We we get that every year. I know, but I'm increasingly becoming a sissy. <laughs> Bit cold in the morning for your early morning runs or cycles or whatever it is you do in, early in the morning. It is, yeah. Well, did you? I don't know. You saw on the weekend the National Party uh, announced that they were going to uh, start to fix 
the teaching of mathematics and they used some numbers they said something like 22 percent of students in year eight were at the required standard uh, for mathematics so you know that's a large number that aren't uh, a very large number that aren't uh, and they've also said that three out of five students in year eight are more than a year behind and the numbers are even worse for Maori with just 12 percent uh, at the curriculum level for year eight and 76 percent are more than a year behind of course uh, the, the Labour Party come out and said oh those numbers are, are dodgy you know it's not 22 percent are at standard it's 42 percent like waha it's better than it is it's still 58 percent failing so I'm interested in your thoughts on that and do you think the problem is just in mathematics or is it probably in other subjects as well? Well, um, <clears throat> before I say what I think think it is, what about this figure for your three three from five that are behind um, in their curriculum? That, that equates to 50,000 kids. So there's 50,000, if you can imagine them standing in a football field, <clears throat> that can't do their maths. Oh, it would feel it's e- pretty horrifying. It would fill Eden Park. Absolutely horrifying. But, um, hey, um, well, Christopher Luxon has really said most of the things that I believe myself, and I totally agree with him that this is an appalling total system failure. It's been coming on for many years, really. Um, And he's absolutely right that progress needs to be assessed. See, they've taken away exams because that's naughty to um, make people accountable for their results, isn't it? We can't have that. No, exactly. So that's been taken away in the place of this NCAE business. Um, But he's right. You can't address what you can't see. You've got to measure it. So I'm right behind them on all of that. Um, And like many of their things, I appreciate that they've made a start, but to me it's never enough. But do you think he realises the entirety of his quoted total system Because where does it start? Well, I've got the breadth of time on my side and I've seen it. And I think it started with the breakdown of the family unit. Um, The parents or parent no longer taught the children to read, write and count before they started school. Uh, That's a privilege we all had. And the grandparents, of course, who often did that, they're far away in a rest home, aren't they? And the government's nanny state has taken responsibility for total education of the children while the parent or parents um, are at work. It would appear they've done a poor job of it as well. You know, if the state ever does they've anything, done it. they always do it badly, don't they? They do do it badly. Um, and, and this is what's showing um, now. And in that time, you see, the discipline of children has been very much discouraged uh, to the point where many are disruptive in the class and and they cannot be controlled. The teacher's not allowed to um, throw throw the uh, blackboard duster at them anymore. And the kids, those kids see no value in schooling. Pretty soon they're not, not attending school, they're truant and roaming the streets like ferals and <clears throat> those are the ones that are being lost uh, you know from being valuable citizens I, I do think it's absolutely tragic Chris Hipkins of course he was the um, Minister of Education wasn't he and <clears throat> he's blaming the previous national government but he hasn't fixed this dire situation in six years he's had a fair crack at it have you seen his New Zealand curriculum's vision for young people. That's worth reading. Uh, it's 156 words of fluff that covers everything bar academic education. It's got every bit of ideology in it you can imagine. Have you well, seen that? Well, it's not. I wouldn't call it a vision. It's more myopic, um, actually, um, with, a, with a bad case of astigmatism. It certainly is, um, but you know, it's listed as a vision. It's just unbelievable the rubbish in that six years that these people have put on their online websites. You know, I guess that's where quite a lot of the bureaucracy has been overemployed, I would think. Labour's education spokesperson, Jan Tanetti, who's an ex teachers union boss, uh, was the Minister of Education in the last years of, 
of the Ardern Hipkins regime. She says she's angry that the government has uh, used, in her terms, erroneous figures. And um, she prefers that 42% rather than 22% of kids in year eight uh, are achieving at standard without even a shred of sort of decency to understand that even that number shows that 58% of uh, of kids in year eight are failing mathematics. Yeah, well, I'd go even further. She's dead right that um, they're erroneous figures. They'll be a darn sight worse than what they have actually said. That's what I believe. Just, just unbelievable. And let's not forget when the teachers were surveyed two years ago and they couldn't answer the maths question of if you had seven flies and you needed a total of ten, how many more would you need? The teachers couldn't answer that themselves. Well, I suppose you'd have to an- answer whether or not some of them are trans flies. <laughs> well, I do say they are. <laughs> Gender benders. Yeah, some of them <laughs> yeah. those, um, that were identifying as flies. And then, you know, we can't really answer. See, in my book, math says you're either right or you're wrong. You can't be almost right, you know, no, you can't, but I mean they have lots of sort of puzzles with algebra and that sort of stuff, don't they? Um, I think nowadays they sort of mark them for, even if they didn't get it right, they mark them uh, for their process and trying to get it right. See, they have they've broken down education totally until it's just a joke. I don't know whether it's deliberate or not, but as more and more time is given to teaching kids that they will either burn up with climate change or be drowned in sea rises, that they may be a cat or even an aberrated sex they've never heard of. And then there's less and less time to spend on worthwhile education and create self-esteem because a lot of these kids um, are very anxious. I've seen three cases in the last week of uh, kids who've climbed into their parents' car in the middle of the night put their foot to the floor and uh, sped along the road on the wrong side of the road, and two of those have killed people that they've banged into. Mm. And they've been chatting suicide with their friends, you know, online, and they've even carried their phone with them and photographed themselves driving along the road like that. Uh, And, of course, the inevitable's happened. They've killed somebody else. But, you know, these things shouldn't be going on in their minds. Well, uh, you know, I put it down to uh, social media, actually, where you've got even adults Mm. who are sitting there getting absolutely every piece of their information about life from Facebook and X and TikTok and God knows what else. And they sit there doom scrolling through all of these things and they get this perception that the world is this horrible, awful place. When an actual... Mm. the world's a beautiful, vibrant place. If only you take your head out of your phone and your ass, and um, have a look around you and learn to enjoy yourself uh, in the here and now, uh, rather than fretting about the alarm, you know, bells that are ringing about climate change and wearing masks and all that sort of bollocks. And I think people just need to turn their phones off and start having putting their head outside the door. And uh, going for a walk in the fresh air and finding out that that life's actually wonderful and beautiful, if only you would have a care to take notice of it. They do, and um, I think this um, action plan, they're actually taking their phones off them, aren't they, while they're they're in class anyway. That's a start. Oh, I mean, Uh, But they do get addicted. They they do get addicted to them. They do get addicted to them, but, you know, again... Uh, National said we're going to you know, stop f- using phones in schools and all of these Karens out there in the Labour Party and the teaching and so on, this is terrible, this is awful. You know, what if they need to ring home? Well, I never had a cell phone when I was at school. I dare say you didn't either. In fact, you're probably damn lucky if you could use the school phone, which only had one line. Uh, and and well, we all managed to cope without having, you know, you know, this micromanaging of their entire life via their cell phones. It's just ridiculous. Well, it's part of the problem. I mean, uh, the way that things have changed, that's why I say about uh, Lux and, you know, does he really realise he's saying it's an appalling total system, which, which we agree on, but does he realise how big that system is? Because it's huge. It's not like you and I were at school. Um, 
you know, we had a life before we went to school, really, and it was good to go to school. A lot of them don't even want to go to school now. And I see them um, up in our town, and it doesn't matter what time of day you, you go into town, you'll, you'll stumble across some of them traipsing around the um, takeaway food places and that sort of thing. Shirts hanging out, you know, ties halfway around their necks and uh, just absolutely no values at all. The lack of focus on life is really worrying. Hmm. I mean, there's, there's always been a moral panic. I can remember when I was a kid and the talk around parents and, you know, schools was the terrible advent of spacey machines and takeaway bars. You know, we were going up, <laughs> putting 20 cents in and, you know, failing dismally at Gal- Galaxians or Space Invaders or, or, or you know, Pac-Man or something like that. Um, and this was this moral panic, and now we seem to see all this moral panic about other things like, oh, vaping, you know, it's terrible they're vaping. And I always just say, well, would you rather they smoked? Yeah. Well, heck, you know, I, I think I've see, seen a wee bit more of life life than you, Cam, and I can go back to um, when if you went, or if I, being a female, went, went into a milk bar, I would be classified as a slut, and mm. I didn't even know what that word meant, but I knew it was something not very good for a while. <laughs> but um, no, they just traipse around the town now. But anyway, there's one other interesting thing which I have experienced myself in the middle of all this thing. Um, the intro of computers and devices uh, in line with maths. Uh, once you get that, your brain knows where the answers are, and that's on the uh, device. Well, that's and right. it definitely affects um, your ability to do maths in your head because your brain has learned, no, I don't need to retrieve it from my head. It's on that screen, and you just can't remember them. And, you know, I, I know somebody who uh, had a career as a um, sales rep, and he could reel off maths in his head while he was stitching up a deal. Unbelievable. And that was only because he had to do it. He he couldn't stop in the middle of a deal and get get his um, calculator out, you know. Well, um, you know. We were at school, and you were probably at school a little bit uh, earlier than me, but we were taught our times tables and various other maths uh, by rote. And we all know our tables, at least up to the 12 times tables. We know automatically what 12 times 12 is or 11 times 12 or 10 times 9 or whatever, we know that inherently in our system. It, we retrieve it, it comes back, the answer is instantaneous, it's faster than any kid can do on a calculator, and yet we're told that that's not the way that we should learn. They need to have hugs. No. They need to have cuddles, you know, a sprinkling of unicorn farts, and and then they'll learn, <laughs> you know. It, and it's, it's, <laughs> yeah. But you'll find if you take that... Um device away from them and uh, you see all the tools you know if if the young people get a job you know at the supermarket or something even all the tools tell you you know how much change that sort of thing yeah. they're actually never having to work out maths at speed in their heads so that's the only way you can learn to do that I think that has a big effect as well I think there's so many factors in this um particular topic you could go on forever about it but the figures they've come up with are absolutely appalling oh they are appalling they're an indictment on the system they're an indictment on the union controlled system and uh and really you know if the labor party or the teacher unions speak up and say something we should actually just you know um discount what they've got to say or just, you know, put a filter on somehow so that all we ever hear is from them, you know, because that's about what the uh, what use their, their statements are. Well, they're hopeless. And do, do they realise, um, this is a, the best that I could work it out, mind you, um, 246,000 unemployed under 24 years of age and we know that that's not the real figure. That's only the figure of those who have actually registered and say they're looking for work. It doesn't count all the ones that are sitting on their butts doing nothing. These people we're talking about now, they're going to go out into that system 
uh, and try and get a job. There'll be um, AI will be a lot more advanced then. There'll be less jobs still, and we've got. I mean, our factory jobs have all gone to China and Vietnam and Mexico and everywhere. So they can no longer just hop into a factory job. Do the teachers' union that are so clever? Do they realise of those future outcomes for those kids? I don't think they do because those kids who are looking for jobs, we now know they can't count. And we also know that most of them mm. don't know who Martha or Martha. That's right. Anyway, I've got uh, Paul waiting. So thanks for your contribution again this week and we'll talk next week. See you later. Welcome to Cam's Buddies, Paul. Great to have you back. Thank you. Great to be back. I've got a real bit of a little conundrum for you and I know you've got a bit of an interest in education. Um, you would have seen over the weekend, or maybe not, you might have caught up with after you've got back from overseas. But the National Party's come out and said, we've got a problem in maths education. Uh, at year eight, uh, uh, only 22% of students are at the expected standard. Uh, three out of five are more than a year behind. Uh, at our lowest schools, only 8% of kids are at the curriculum level maths in year eight and 79% of them are more than a year behind. And for Maori, 12% are at the curriculum and 76 behind. Now, I know that you're on a couple of school boards, so I'm very interested to see what you think about this revelation and the po possible solutions that we should have. Well, it's, um, what I find is very interesting is the things that are the root causes of this is, absenteeism from school and so um, and we don't even measure it in a way that is readable or understandable so we measure it in by saying because um, I think in the last three years our um, attendance stats have dropped from 70% down to a 40 something percent and and but what they mean by that is 40% of kids attend school more than 90% of the time. And so um, you, you can't really get to the bottom of it unless you look at the actual numbers on the, 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 um, a school um, dashboard, if you like, for, for schools. And um, so in primary school um, and then secondary school up to year eight. So um, if you're going to a primary and an intermediate school, sorry, up to year eight, those kids, are, if you look at where the band, where they should be, in, in year seven, I think they should be at the beginning of level four. And at the end of year eight, they should be at the end of level four. Sorry, at, at, they should be starting level four in, in, in year seven. So Year seven and eight, or form one and two, uh, as we used to know it, they're, they're quite tough years for kids. And if I tell you something, and, and today's lesson builds tomorrow's lesson, and so you have to know today's lesson to be learning about tomorrow's lesson, and 60% of the kids aren't coming every day, they end up with gaps. And when they end up with gaps, the, the questions are often, um, like if you were to look up, there's a, there's a classic test. If you were born five years ago, how old are you? Or if you're 22 years now is, is what they do to throw a red heading against. If you were born five years ago, how old are you now? And the answer is five. You were born five years ago, you're five. Well, listen to them. The number of people, like these, I think there's 38 answers for that question. That they've, that they've given, you can see on YouTube and all these sorts of stupid things or Facebook or whatever. And what they're saying is they can't even get the English of the question. So many math questions are determined by how well you speak English. And so in the school that I'm on the board of, we've got a lot of people who are ESOL kids, so that they, um, they don't have English as a first language. And as such... Um, if you can ask them their question in their native tongue, they do way better. And so is the maths the failure or is the English the failure? And, and you, you would see, um, like, one, another, another thing you can look up on the internet is kids are being asked, what's three times seven? And they say 21. And so I say, what's seven times three? 
Mm, I don't know. You think, and these are kids that look like they're about 15. And you think, how could you not know that? Well, again, it's the way things are often phrased. And so if they learnt it one way, and they then realise that the opposite is, is the same thing. So, and, and there's a whole lot of tricks to maths that n- the teachers don't even learn. And so when the teachers don't learn the tricks to maths, they don't on teach them. For example, you can ask anybody that's sort of related to me, their 11 times table up to just about any number you like. And you say to them, what's 11 times 39? And the answer is, Three, add the three and the nine together makes 12, so it's 412, uh, the 419. So, sorry, 429. And so, or if you go, what's 11 times 33? It's an easier one. So, 11 times 33 is 363. So, you add the two and together, and if you have to carry the one in your head, so, so be it. Well, our kids do get taught that. They get to learn right up to 12 times 11. And that's what it is. And a few schools were going up to 16. Very few went to 20 for rote learning. But that maths rote learning or arithmetic, as we used to call the easy parts of it, um, that holds you in good stead for a, a lot of um, your education in all sorts of things that you're doing. You know, like someone says to you, what's your wages? And you say, oh, um, I'm on $20 an hour, you can just halve it and say, oh, um, for a year, that probably puts you on a um, something like 40 thousand. You know, you double it and, and that puts you on. And so you get all these easy ways of doing things if you want to work, work things out. And so that, you know, 40 is 800 a week, 800 a week um, gives you 40,000 a year. So those are things that are easy for for people to work out if they can just remember half and double. And and so that there's lots of these tricks that you can get for everything. Um, but our kids aren't even learning the basics. And it's because of truancy is my belief. My belief is the kids don't go to school every day. There's gaps in their learning. And when there's gaps in their learning and this one subject builds on the next, or the previous, sorry, um, they'll struggle. Yeah. Well, they certainly will. But does this point to a, a systemic problem in our education system? Uh, every time somebody tries to do something to fix it, they actually make it worse. And whilst we've got uh, truancy uh, happening, that's a given we're going to have poor outcomes for kids. But isn't the problem deeper than that as well, in that we've got an education system that we are told repeatedly by the teacher unions, the Labour Party and anybody else who has an opinion on this, that we have a world-class education system. But the numbers I'm looking at suggest we don't, and that, that's a lie. Mm. Well, they do say that we're, we have got a world-class education system. Um, it doesn't look like it to me, but on the school that I'm on the board of, I've really pushed for the basics and I've really pushed for attendance. So if you if the attendance is low, um, we we phone home, we contract the kids at the beginning of the year to make sure that they um, are written down the contract that they're going to come to school every day that they're not unwell, and, and so on. And then our teachers really love the kids and know them all individually. So we've got a decile well, what was a decile one school performing at eighty percent plus in ZCA. And you look and you think, these kids are doing it. Now, we, I think we've got three European children at the school and we've got 360 kids on the roll and most of them are Maori, Pacifica, or um, there's a few um, uh, from some of the um, Philippines or things like that. And, and you look and you think, these kids, most of them don't have English as a first language but when you work with them and you study with them and you work on them, and we're having the, um, the Ministry of Education come and say, oh, let's have a look, what's, what are you guys doing that's different? And they want to know and they want to ask us some of the things, that some of the strategies that we're using. But what they have done just recently, which I think is, it breaks my heart really, is they've said, oh, because your kids are now as successful as they are, they've cut our all people funding. So we get less funding now based on our results. 
So when the teachers work hard, because if you're a decile 10 school, you get way less funding than if you're a decile 1 school. But now that they've changed, this, so that there's, there's no deciles, they're saying, um, depending on how well you do, so we're losing quite large amounts of money because our school under the senior leadership team have worked so hard, got the right teachers on board, and now that they're um, succeeding, they're cutting our funding. That's that's us backwards. Now, in the business world, <laughs> if you've got a sales team and you've got one person who's hitting budget, exceeding, you know, selling more, and this is the Pareto principle where 80% of your sales are produced by 20% of your salespeople, which ones paid the most in the real world? What's the, what's the ones who achieve the most, right? You so, would hope, yes. So, um, you know, you, you wonder how the school system seems to think that the ones who achieve the most get the least. It, it's bizarre. <laughs> well, it's, it's bizarre. But also, if you add to that, the fact that the teachers are all, like if, if you look at what they're being taught at a lot of these places, they're being taught a whole lot of woke ideology. And they're being taught that you've got to have quite a few rounds of holidization and how bad it is for our, our people and all these sorts of things so that they're spending a lot of time learning things that aren't going to help them. Like our school just recently really kicked butt in um, the band competition that was run, they had the Battle of the Bands type thing that from all over the world happened in New Zealand and it was hardly even getting a mention. And our school won um, a category. And you can't generalise, but what do a lot of Polynesian people do? Well, they sing well, they play instruments well, they dance well. It, and a, a lot of, if you can feed to the strengths of these people so they have some good successes, Whoever they are, whatever group they are, they've got some raw talent that if you feed into that, they get successes. And then you, with those successes, move them over into the curriculum that we need so that they don't feel like that they're failing at a lot of things because they're succeeding at a lot of things. Success breeds success. And the next thing you know, um, the kids are doing well. Now, not all our kids do well in mathematics, but a heap do well in mathematics, like way better than the national average. Yeah, it's 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 incredible. It's it's astonishing, and uh, all power to you now, and that school that you're uh, on the board of. Paul, um, you know that's huge success. And what we need to do is actually start picking people's brains that are people like you, rather than listening to the teacher unions. What is also interesting is the kids come to your school. So our school here starts at year nine. The kids come with year eight education and some are at level one and level two of maths and that's year two and three and very few are at um, level five, which means they're above. And so we're taking kids and, and what I've always said to our um, staff and our leadership team, we need to raise them more than a year's worth in a year. So if you're a level two, well, you've got it tough, but I want you to be more than whatever you would normally do in a year. I want you to do more work than that in a year. And even though you're still below or well below, you have big ups and big praise in my book because you've achieved more than a year's worth of growth in a year. And we're trying to show them and make, you know, show them and teach them how handy some of these skills are. And this is how you use math elsewhere. This is what interest rates work like. This is what if someone says, how much do you pay for a week to buy a particular car on higher purchase? What does that mean full price compared to what? So we show them real world examples of how maths can work for them, how interest rates can work for them, and these sorts of things. And the kids kind of get it when you can relate it to something that they're interested in. Well, especially if you can teach them the difference between margin and markup, because as soon as they understand, even that easy one, yeah. Given that easy one, which which so many people fail at, um, you know, I, I always add to it when I'm teaching somebody that that um, markup means you go broke, margin means you make profit. Yes, exactly. And what's the difference between a third and a half in the same world? You know, if you've yeah. got a fifty percent margin, 
then you're selling it for a three rather than a two. If you've got a 50% markup, you're selling it for whaleys. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a quarter more or a third more. And so all these things people don't get unless they realize that, you know, you get two apples and you trade them for three or you get three apples and you add one more making it four and you think, well, hang on, they're, they're much different numbers. Um, three quarters of four is different than um, two thirds of three. And, and you're trying to say to people, look, at it's so easy, it's so obvious. If you could just get your head around it, it it's all good for you. And many of our young people are uh, of a belief that they can't make it. And sometimes at, at the school that I'm at, we have problem children and the principal might go and check out what's the story and call them in and they, they haven't eaten any food for four days other than the lunch that's supplied them at school. But yeah. they didn't eat anything over the weekend because they're out of money. Well, these are things that are real issues in some of these lower, lower value um, areas or these people where there's, where there's poor people. But the kids have still got, like they smile a lot, they've got great brains and we can teach them amazing things. And they don't have to be um, failing at maths. No, it, 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 as I said to Miles and to, to Lindley before, maths is either right or wrong. There's no middle ground on it. So if you can get them to get it right more than they get it wrong, then their life's going to improve significantly. Mm. I heard recently that maths is a racist concept. Oh, yes, it's terrible. Jack will be waiting. I'll be uh, <laughs> hear what he's got to say about the education system. Okay, all good. Take care. Sorry if I've raved on. <laughs> all right, Paul, is gems of wisdom. Thank you. Bye for now. Welcome back to Cam's Buddies, Jack. Good to have you back. Good, right, Cam. So the topic this week well, is about education and, in particular, the abject failure of the school system to teach kids mathematics. The National Party has decided they're going to do something about it. They said that apparently only 22% of year eight students, well, kind of form two in old school, uh, are able to do mathematics at, at a sufficient level. So what are your thoughts on that and what should we do to fix it? Well, they can talk all they like, but this is not a new thing. I was educated in the late 50s and uh, the mid-60s, and um, I can remember my father, who was in the RNBDF, got posted to Singapore during the Malayan emergency, and for three years, 56 through 58, I was educated in an English school run by the Royal Air Force. When I came back, I went into the same class that I'd left before I went away, and same people there, and I was light years ahead of them. It was, so, it was so embarrassing that um, they took two more years to catch up. I was ducks of the uh, school, and I won a scholarship to go to Nelson College. And really, it's only because all the other people were so dumb. Now, since then, we've dumbed down the situation to the point where there's no the, way, the word failure has been taken out of, I don't know, uh, the English language. No one's allowed to fail. I mean, in England, at age 11, you have to pass an exam called the 11 plus. That determines whether you pass or fail or can get to a grammar school or a secondary modern. Your, your life starts there. But over here, no, it's set on the standards of the lowest common denominator. Nobody must fail. And of course, that's why there's a lot of trouble in schools. The bright ones, you were telling me yesterday, um, how you were a bit of a larrick in at school because um, basically you were bored. Because it's all education now is position for the lowest common denominator. Well, unless we change that, we are stuff. Now, I can remember during the 90s, I was asked by the education department, I think it was, to write the subjects for the NCEA examination for uh, the photographic industry to get a certificate in digital imaging. And it's very nice. They kept flying me down to Wellington. God knows why. What a waste of money. I said, I don't need to be flown down there. But no, they insisted um, but it was pretty good because it was Ansett Airlines and the hosties were so pretty and the food was so good. It was really good. Anyway, I kept writing these subjects and then they were being uh, uh, vetted by a professor at Otago University who kept saying to me, oh, no, it's too hard. Do you need to sort of, um, you know, bring it down? No one, this is a guy who knew nothing about the subject I was writing on, I should add. kept saying, oh, no, um, you know, you need to make it uh, easier. I said, do you actually know the question? Can you answer them? Oh, it's not my topic, he said. Anyway, 
I go on. Um, it's quite depressing, really. I think um, the schools here catch up sort of uh, later in, you know, um, high school, um, most of them, some of them. Uh, but in the early years, where it's all matters, nah, hopeless. Well, you know, I, you, you touch on a couple of interesting points. I mean, when I was growing up, I was taught that coming second was first loser. Excellent. Right? So who wants to come second? It's not winning, is it? Now you've got all these people celebrating that they came second or third in the Olympics, and I'm thinking, yeah, but it's not gold. Like, no one remembers who came who came. It's a, bit, it's a bit harsh, but I understand where you're coming from. This is a bit harsh, but they do. it's nice. You know, like, and then they'd say, oh, we're not going to keep score in you know, for this this game of football. And I said, well, you know, if winning wasn't... I know, I know. If, winning, if winning's not important, why do they keep score? You know, so... I'll it, tell you, when I, I was a cricket coach at the Cornwall Cricket Club, and they, they told me, because uh, I was a new coach, that I had they had to enjoy the game. So I sat them all the kids down and I said, okay, I've been told to tell you that um, you're to enjoy the game. Um, and that's the only thing you need to know. And I then said, how do you think you're going to enjoy this game the best? And all the hands went up and they said, by winning. I said, oh, good, great. Now we're on the same pathway. Let's go. And we won the Auckland Championship. <laughs> that's 100% correct. You, no one enjoys losing, right? It's like, it's like kissing no, their... people hate it's losing. Hanging. Exactly. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I, I despair. It's, hey, not only, it's not just um, mathematics, it's English as well. When you've got people like Jack Tame, who really need to go off to uh, learn the English language, if you, when they do, conduct an interview, he, I counted, he says, yeah, 30 times in one short interview. I can't stand listening to him because of that. I even texted him and say, hey, can you just let the guy speak without interrupting? And if you do want to interrupt, can you use correct English? But well, I never got a reply, of course. Um, it's, it's the, you know, you have TV commercials that go next minute and everyone thinks this is really cool. This pigeon English. And it's all rubbish, isn't it? It is, in my opinion. All right, Jack, uh, uh, that'll be enough for this All week, right. and we'll talk again next week. Hey, Cam. Bye. Welcome to Cam's Buddies. Jimmy, good to have you back. Thanks, Cam. Good to be here. What have you got for me this week, mate? So this week, I think we'll have a little chat about education. You've got a couple of kids in, in the school system. I do. Did you see the National Party uh, talking on the weekend uh, about the problem in mathematics? We're just 22% of the yeah. school kids um, in, in Form 2 in old school or, or Year 8 uh, can't, uh, can do maths. The, you know, 78% can't. Uh, and the numbers get worse if you're uh, in low decile schools or, or uh, a Maori. What are your thoughts on that and what do you think the government is doing about it? Well, to be honest, it's just, it's quite frankly staggering that the, the statistics are so bad. I mean, they've just been in decline for so long. And then finally, the government has talked about changing the way we learn and teach and measuring. And they left a howling about it. But they've had 20 years and it just hasn't worked. We have to change. It's it's the end of a country if you don't educate your population. You know, and imagine another 30 years. It's, it's just no one in the whole country educated. It'd just be a disaster. So... It's, thank goodness they're actually doing something about it. But if the stats I are mean, bad, yeah. they're going to be bad in English, aren't they, as well? Well, the, the, my understanding is it's very bad across the board. It's terrible. Like The open classroom policy has just been a terrible failure. The mixing kids of um, different age groups has just been a, just more, social, more of a social policy. It's just not education. I mean, when I was at school in the late 80s and 90s, it was... Quite, um, New Zealand was quite well placed educationally then, and education was really quite black and white, all the same age, the same, you know, quite structured learning. It clearly worked. I, I had no idea why they moved away from it. It was just a, a, a pattern of the West to go sort of down that woke sort of learning by feeling method. But, Do you think it's um, a, but, a problem with the actual system? Um, meaning the people that are in it as well, 
because, you know, we tried to bring in charter schools and the teacher unions cut up rough, the Labour Party then abolished them. And they've provided, presided over six years of these year eight students, right? So only the first two years of school that these students who are failing mathematics have been un, under any government other than Labour. Uh, don't they hold some responsibility for the failure? And same with the teacher unions. Yeah, I mean, it's just the unions. Why would you not have performance pay? Why do these teachers want to have all this equal pay? I had teachers at high school that horrendous teachers that didn't even they turn up to class and smoke. Like they literally do nothing, and they get the same pay as the te- teachers who turn up really well prepared. It's insane. Why wouldn't you want schools chasing the best teachers? Why do they want everyone to be equal? Why? Because well, they're communists. It's, it's mind blowing. Hmm. Well, that's that's what it ultimately comes back to. That they just want everyone to be equal all the time, but we're just not. And so we want to have some competition, and we want to have some schools better than others, and we want people to have a culture where they're trying to foster education for their kids. It just it's mind blowing. This country, it's yeah. absolutely crazy. I just don't think the general public know how bad it is. Well, I don't think they do, and and you know, once you don't have any kids in the system, and and or even grandkids in the system, you kind of stop caring. But um, I think it is it's critical if you don't uh, educate kids properly. Well, it's going to make it very difficult in life for them later. It, it limits their choices. Absolutely, and and to a that's to an individual, but to a society, a whole country you don't educate an entire generation or two. It's horrendous to your country. You know, imagine you've got no educated New Zealanders. You know, it's, you'd either be fully relying on immigration, which would completely change the culture of your country, or head towards a third world situation, which, you know, is, is on the cards. Lindley um, uh, put some numbers on this, said something like 50,000 kids are failing. 50,000. That, that, that's a full Eden Park. <laughs> Terrible, eh? When you say failing, does that mean that they just wouldn't pass the end of year test or is it just they fail completely, like just can't do it at all? Yeah, only 22% of those in year eight can meet the standard. Now, of year eight. I know that we can't talk about failing. I mean, I'll let it use, but in my book, if you're not meeting the standard, you're failing, right? That, that is, that's the real life. That's what happens. Yeah. You can't go through life uh, yeah. with only 22% of your workers meeting the standard. You know, imagine if that was <laughs> imagine if that was actually teachers, right? Only twenty two percent of teachers met the standard for teaching in the class, right? Well, well I, I did hear something like that. that the teachers didn't meet the NCA qualifications for was it mathematics? They're teaching kids, and they can't do it themselves. <laughs> exactly. You know, uh, how can you get on if you're as dull as the children that you're supposed to be educating? It's dullards educating because dullards. they're protected by the the unions. It's always unions, eh? I don't like to be anti-union because you know unions do have their place. There are some unfortunate people in life that need to have someone stick up for them. But but by and large, unions nineteen thirties coal miner. Yeah, they they cater to the lowest common denominator, and in this case, it's a very low denominator. Yeah, I just think that if you want to be a successful teacher in New Zealand, that you, you just can't because you're just going to get measured by the low yardstick of your lazy colleague. And that's just not going to drive ambition, which is just passed on to children. It's, it's just sad. I think Eric Stanford's doing a great job. I've heard her speaking a few times, and she's massively passionate about it. Sounds like she's taken on a lot of problems. Well, she's going like to take dire for her. Mm-hmm. And that's not going to end well because that's what always happens. Uh, they get the teacher union gets get stroppy. The national party then gets cowardly, and then nothing much happens. But this has been going on for years. I mean, I can remember when I was in the fifth form, so it's quite some time ago. Uh, my teacher <laughs> in fifth form maths was a guy who has had numerous awards in the decades that he was teaching as a maths teacher. He's really as a world-class math teacher, and in that year, in the fifth form, he would have attended class maybe 10% of the time, and the rest of the time he sent a prefect along to tell us which chapter of the book we were going to be reading, 
and and the quiz at the, at the end of each chapter, and that's what we had to do for homework. And that's what his lessons were like too. So this is a guy who has had decades, 40 years plus teaching mathematics, and he continued on to teach after I left school, you know, and he's, he's still alive. I looked up his LinkedIn profile the other day, and he's still out there teaching mathematics. And I was thinking, wow. Jeez, he must be getting on. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's got to be in his 70s now. But, but this is a guy who is recognized as one of the best maths teachers. My experience with him as is a teacher. Is that today he's still recognized or back then? Still. You can look him up. He's, oh, my God. He's very famous. Competed in the Commonwealth Games. Wow. But but my experience of him was lazy, uh, indolent, Terrible. and appalling. And as a consequence, I didn't do particularly well at maths because I never had a teacher that educated me in, or excited me about mathematics. That said, I had some fantastic English teachers and history teachers and unsurprisingly, I scored in the 90% for those subjects because they excited me and taught me to enjoy those topics. Maths, not so much. Yeah, well, look how, because I had, I had terrible English teachers, but good mathematics teachers, so I was the opposite to you. So it really does have an effect on your life, eh? Mm. You know, people say school's nothing, but it does. It really shapes your beliefs and... It's super important, and we just don't have enough priority on it. And a Kiwi culture just doesn't seem to weigh heavy enough on education anymore. Whereas it, we were like number one in the 1960s or 70s. It's like, and like it just has become funny. You know, it's near enough. Oh, that'll do. You know, maths is either right or wrong. There's no middle ground on here. But if they gave it a good go and they showed us they're working, and even though they got it wrong, I oh, will give them marks for that. We're now reaping what we've sown. Yeah, but it's right across. It's like even getting rid of winners and losers in school competitions. It's just accepting me uh, currently at all. We've got to get rid of the communists, mate. We need to battle the communists. You know, <laughs> yeah. this desire to make school equal is insane. Just going to end up with this mediocre country, but at least we'll be equal. Yeah. All right, Jimmy. Thanks for coming in to Cam Studies again. We'll talk again next week and try and solve some more problems. We always end up talking about communists, Cam. But thanks, mate. Talk next week. All right, see you. Bye. It's always interesting to see what the person on the street thinks, and today was no different. Clearly, the system has failed. My buddies know it, you know it, but it seems the only people who don't know it or don't want to know it are the Labour Party and the teacher unions. Tell us your thoughts on this topic by emailing inbox at realitycheck.radio or text to 2057. Thanks for tuning in to RCR, Reality Check Radio. Do you like what you're listening to or dislike what you're listening to? Either way, we want to hear from you. Get in touch with us now. You can text us with your message to 2057. That's 2057. Or email us at inbox at realitycheck.radio. We'd love to hear from you, so connect with us today.